Hi, everybody. Tarya. Hi, everybody. John. Hi, Tarya. Hi, Benedict. Letting everybody log on here. Let's see. Make sure you mute yourself if you can. Hopefully, you can see me. And then I'll turn the camera around a little bit. All right. Let me see what we got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people, nine people, more people coming in. There's no sound. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me now? I think I have the sound on now. If you can't hear me, let me know. Here's one more chat. Yes, okay, good. Now you can hear me. All right, so I am here at the Met Brewer, and this is the show of Leha Thea Selmans, and she is a Metrima. That's in there and here. She is from Latvia and she was born in 1938 and she immigrated to the United States and she was a child at the age of 10 and she went to um, Indiana and she went to undergrad there. Oh, somebody's got their sound on, so let me try to mute whoever's mute all. Yes, please. Oh, that doesn't work on my computer. What a wonderful tool. Okay. So um, she is from Latvia. She is, um, went to Indiana uh, after fleeing her country with her family. And then she did her undergrad at an Indian University <coughs> to uh, UCLA in Los Angeles. Um, so she, I'm sorry if it's a little loud, there's other people here. There's not much I can do about it. And I'm going to also speak at a kind of a low voice. So, I hope that everyone can hear me. In general, I'm probably the loudest one here. <laughs> so um, let me turn the screen around here and show you where we are. So this is, um, we're coming into the first room. So what I want to tell you about this artist, and I decided to do this today. Mm -hmm. One, because it, I do travel a lot and I go to a lot of art shows and I thought, well, why don't I incorporate that into my lessons? Um, Okay, so these are oil paintings of things that uh, were in her home in, um, in, when she went to UCLA. She was 22 years old and she started painting things in her home. She said she felt very solitary and she felt very, um, hopefully this guy doesn't tell me not to video it. Anything. Okay, he didn't. Um, so uh, we have lots of actually let me start the other way pencil drawings of um, <clears throat> and paintings these are tonal paintings so it's kind of interesting to see these right now because we've been practicing tone in a lot of my classes so these are oil on canvas and this is in 1964 this is a painting of a television and there is airplanes crashing on it so some people uh, ask the question a lot of times, does this have to do with her being a refugee? Is this coming from her psyche? Uh, in a lecture that I heard of her speaking, she said that it, it really didn't relate to that, but maybe subconsciously in a way it does. So this is really her at a very young age at UCLA trying to figure out who she is as an artist. And she's oil painting and she's painting mostly things in her home that plug in. So things that plug in, like this heater, and just single items that plug in. She said she really felt very alone. She was living in LA. She wasn't really feeling like um, she knew what the heck she was doing. You know, she'd been taken from her country. Then she had been, wasn't very pleased with Indiana. She said that it's a very confused state. And then she got to UCLA and started painting things that she did know, things that plugged in, that turned off and on. Um, people often relate this to her solitude, but it's up to you what you want to relate it to. Um, so there's several of these from her 
graduate program. There's a fan and they're beautiful. They're nice paintings. Um, but they are paintings and later she moves on to graphite because she feels like it's a much better sense of what um, her relation to the paper and her experience showing up through the artwork. Uh, so we have lots of things going on. We have the solitary feeling of being in California. We have um, these sort of sad, lonely paintings happening in a very bright place. And she said she felt weird about the fact that she was making um, these dark drawings and black and white and smoke and things while living in California. Then she also has some very interesting sculptures. So she's a sculptor, she's a printmaker, she's a painter, and she's a drawer. So those are giant erasers and this is a giant pencil. I just wanna show you this. I actually didn't find too much research on this. So if you are enticed to look into those sculptures, you definitely should. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into this other room, which is more of the trompe l'oeil room. Trompe l'oeil literally means that it's made to look like it's real, like you could pick it up right off the canvas and take it with you. So these are clippings of, but they're actually drawings of clippings of paper. But this is a drawing, it's not actually a clipping of paper, so I'm gonna get really in there so you can see. But this is gray paper, just graphite on paper. And this is when she starts to move to graphite. So it's graphite, it says airplane, disaster, graphite, and on acrylic ground on paper. So, again, for those of us who are in my landscape class or my life drawing class, take a moment to think about the tone that's going on in here in these beautiful, delicate drawings. Even the fold in the paper right here, that's drawn on. So the paper the clipping is meant to look like it's real paper sitting there, but it really isn't. It's a drawing of a piece of paper with the crinkles and all. And that is called trompe l'oeil. This is not Hiroshima. Okay, so this is one of my, my favorite ones because this is a letter from her mother, which she kept for two years in this envelope. And then she copied the envelope, she drew out the envelope, and she even went so far as to redraw the stamps, cut them out, and then actually stick them back onto the piece of paper. So in a way, it's a collage and it's a drawing. So this is, this is where these stamps are actually redrawn, recreated, and then put back on there. Okay, so let me flip you guys around. Talk to me so you can see my face for a minute. So I'm going to go upstairs to the other room, which is where we were in the. Um, I'm actually going to skip this room in here. So well, I'll do a quick look. These are where the graphite drawings come in. Hold on, let me put myself in. These are graph. Uh, actually, these are salt oil paintings, but we're still dealing with black and white. We're dealing with tone. We're dealing with a lot of clouds, airplanes. So again, now we start seeing things that are timeless, sort of going through sky, and there are a lot of war things through this work. So she's sort of working through what she comes to and, and she's getting simpler and simpler. She's going for more and more black and white and then she'll leave paint and she'll go strictly for graphite. One of the few in color. Okay, so now I'm gonna go upstairs. Okay. And feel feel free to chat. So we're going 
down one floor to the fourth floor. These drawings are so important. Um, this is where she starts really taking away. She starts, she's looking at a black and white drawing of an ocean. Okay, and, and this week I taught calm waves. So then I came here and I saw these drawings. And she says that they're not, um, they're not copies of the photograph that she's looking at. Like she found a scrappy old photograph of space. She found a photograph of, or she took the photograph of the ocean in black and white, but then she makes graphite drawings. She's reinventing them. She's not copying the graphite drawings. They also lack sort of composition and space. Oh, I think I'm just going to take the stairs. Oh, okay, I don't know. The elevator showed up. Okay, so she, we're talking, we're thinking about, she's, she sort of decides to abandon the idea of composition completely. And she's like, I really wanted to let go of everything that really didn't, didn't work for her that we were they are teaching in schools, you know, all the things I teach you, composition and tone and coven and all these rules. And she said she really wanted to abandon those. Um, let's see. So let me hit this around again. So here we are on the fourth floor now. We're going down. Um, let's see. So she she's shifting between media. She Okay, so I just got kicked out, guys. So, um, can I go out here? Yeah. Um, wow. So, I just got kicked out. <laughs> but at least you got to see some of it. Um, but not the best part. So, what I'm going to do is just, like, walk around quietly with my phone and um, not talk so that you can see the artwork silenced but uh, no one will know that I'm recording. And then I'll probably get kicked out again. But what I want you to be able to see is just a few of these graphite drawings. They're also listed on the, um, on the page that I made for today. There's some great videos about her work, but the moral of the story is she breaks all the rules. She lets go of composition. Like there's not even a horizon line in her work. It's literally just water or just sky. Um, and it's really not even about that thing, but it's about uh, the, uh, the expression and the rawness of that thing. It's not really about the thing that she's drawing. Okay, so I'm gonna, um, uh-oh, I hope we can get back in there. Go. <laughs> I'm going to turn this around and pretend like I'm not videotaping now. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if this works. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just going to hang up and, um, yeah. Just... These are the sky ones. These were all graphite. These are oil on canvas. Wow. That's crazy.
and waves. Here we go. So space, airplanes, and waves. So these are the waves. I hope everyone has a great day and check out the other videos I posted. Bye.